Hey guys, it's Joe from Eastwood. In this video, I'm going to run you guys through how to correctly use an Eastwood tap and die set. We're going to go through what you get in an Eastwood tap and die set, how to read fastener sizes, how to figure out what size threads you have on a fastener, how to use a die, how to use a tap, and I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks that I have along the way. Okay, so before we dive into how to use this, let's talk about some of the very basics. A kit like this is going to include taps, dies, ways to spin them, and some gauges are usually in there as well. A tap cuts the female portion of the threads, that's known as tapping, and a die cuts the male portion of the threads, that's known as threading. In my opinion, a good tap and die set is a must have for any garage. There's two people in the world, those who have used these before, and those who will need to use one of these eventually. For the second group, you're watching the right video. Let's talk about the bare minimum of what you'll need to get started. Of course, a tap and die set. Eastwood offers both a 60 piece and a 110 piece kit. The 60 goes from metric sizes M3 to M12 and SAE sizes number four to half an inch. The 110 kit, which is what you see right here, this goes from metric M6 to M18 and standard number four to three quarters of an inch. If you're interested in the details, I have product videos for both of these kits posted where I dive into the nitty gritty of each one and what comes with each kit. You can check those out after this video. Bare minimum, you'll also need some cutting fluid to help cut and drill metal, and of course some drill bits and a drill. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to talk about today is how to read a fastener. It follows the format of diameter, thread count, and then length. This applies to both imperial and metric. However, the way that those measurements are applied are a little bit different depending whether you're in metric or imperial. So we're gonna start with metric. That is a little bit more straightforward. It's going to follow that diameter, thread count, and length format. For example, let's take an M10 by 15 by 30. First, we have an M for metric, of course, and a 10 for the major diameter in millimeters. The major diameter is measured from the widest point of the thread. In this case, we can see that it's 10 millimeters. Next, we have the thread portion. We have 15, that's gonna be our thread pitch in millimeters, or the spacing between the widest points of the thread peaks. In this case, one and a half millimeters. Our last number, that's gonna be 30. That is going to be the length of the thread in millimeters, not including the head of the bolt. So from the bottom of the head to the end of the fastener, pretty straightforward. So next, let's take a look at how the diameter, thread count, and length format applies to an imperial fastener. Let's take a look at this bolt right here. This is a 3 8 by 16 by one and a quarter. This is gonna start with the major diameter, again, just like metric. In this case, we have 3 8 of an inch. This is a smaller diameter, but when you get smaller than a quarter of an inch, this is going to use numbers instead. You're going to start with a 12 being the largest, and that's gonna decrease in size down to a size zero. Next we have our thread pitch, and that is gonna be a 16. This is the number of threads per inch, so this is a little bit different than metric. In metric, you'd measure the individual spacing between threads. In imperial, you simply count the number of threads per inch. Lastly, we have our length, and that is gonna be one and a quarter, and that is simply gonna be the length of the fastener in inches. Now, sometimes if you have a bolt and you wanna find out what the sizing is, there's two common ways to do that. The first and more proper way to do that is to use a fractional pitch gauge. This has these feet that swing out and it's basically a little cross section of a thread with the size printed on the side. All you have to do is flip through, find the one that fits the bolt you're working with, hold it up to the light, see if any light gets through and boom, you have your size. The second way to do this is to use a tap. The taps have the same exact profile as the bolt or fastener you're working with. So in the same vein, you can set a tap within the threads of your fastener. And when you have the right fit, no light you get through, read the size of your tap and you're golden. Now let's move on to the work. First thing we're going to do is I'm gonna show you how to use a tap. First, you wanna drill a hole the correct size depending on what your goals are. Each tap has a corresponding drill bit size for it. You can find these relationships in the instruction manual. Once you have your hole in there, deburr it and maybe put a nice chamfer in there, which helps with the lead in. All right, so we're gonna do some tapping next. You do wanna make sure you're using lube. It's a good idea to get in the habit of using some cutting fluid, not just when you're tapping holes, but drilling them as well. All right, so enter the hole straight up and down, go slow, frequently back out and clear the chips. Good rule of thumb here, half a turn forward, quarter turn back. 
That is just going to move all the chips that you just created in that space between the cutting areas, and that keeps the tap from binding up. And if you're a stupid caveman, just like myself, sometimes you let your big, huge muscles get ahead of your pea brain, and you end up breaking a tap. Just be gentle. Taps are hardened, and they are brittle. When they break, it could mean a few hours of removing a broken tap before you could get going again, so always keep that in mind. Now the other half of the equation is going to be the opposite, the female side of the threads. You cut those with the dies in the kits. Most likely, you use dies just to clean up or straighten out damaged threads that are already there. For instance, if threads are a little rusty or bent over or they just have some dirt on them or maybe they were painted over by accident, in that scenario, you could use a die to restore the threads. But in this case, I'll show you guys how to make brand new threads entirely. The diameter of the rod will let you know which die you need to use. Once you have your selection, secure the die into the holder and tighten the screws to secure it. Then you can secure your rod into the vise and you can carefully thread the die onto the rod. As you do this, make sure it's lubricated with that cutting fluid and make sure to back off the die. Again, good rule of thumb here, half turn forward, quarter turn back. Working with the die is a little bit easier than a tap. With a tap, there's always the threat of breakage if you're not careful with the die not as much. They could take a little bit more abuse before they start to whine about it, but regardless, just go slow, let the die do the work. Once you're as deep as you like, unthread the die, hit the new threads with some brake clean and clean off the cutting fluid and chips, thread a nut on, and voila. So guys, I hope now you can better see the value that one of these tap and die kits can hold in the garage. It's never fun to reach for these boxes when you didn't expect to have to, but they will save your project and you will be glad that they were there when they need to do so. And if you're dying for more content, I have a detailed breakdown guide for both of our 60 piece and 110 piece tap and die kits. I'll have those linked below, as well as all the links to the products you saw in this video today. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you tap that subscribe button. I'm Joe, make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.